You finally make the move to TNA as a booker around September 2003, some 15 months after the company's first show. Dave Meltzer, your old friend, wrote at the time that TNA offered you twice the money that Victor Quinones was paying you, plus the IWA was experiencing a downturn in business. Is that true? Well, they didn't offer me, what did you say, TNA offered me twice the money? Yes. They didn't, they, they offered me a raise. It wasn't twice the money. And IWA was not experiencing a downturn in business. It was still, it, it was still, I mean, blasting. It actually, after I left, it took three months or two months for it to, to go down because it ran on its own power for two months. All, all they had to do was continue to book what I had booked and it continued to do well. Then when I left at uh, two months gone, then you could see the, the chinks in the armor. Do, 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 do. It was, it was falling off. And then they went into a downturn. Now it went into a downturn such and Victor Quinones, I don't know if a lot of people know who he is. He was a, a guy who was actually, he was Puerto Rican and he grew up, I think, in New York and Puerto Rico, both of them. But he was a a friend of Gorilla Monsoon and Gorilla liked him. He used to do a lot of traveling with him. And, uh, and Victor Quinones, I don't know where all his money came from but I think he got involved in Japanese wrestling. And I think he made a lot of money in the Japanese merchandise market because he was constantly bringing in T-shirts and pictures and stuff. And there's a lot of money in those gimmicks, a lot of money. But, and I think I left, he said, in 2003, it says, Mm -hmm. which is right. In 2005, I think Victor Quinones killed himself because he was making, when I took over, he was losing $10,000 a week is what he was losing. And after I took it over, after about three months, it took me about three months to get it into shape. Then he started making ten or 20000 a week because we would go in those big stadiums and they would be 15,000, 16,000 and they'd it'd be sold out. It'd be a it'd be a 120, 130,000 dollar house. I don't think you could give 15,000 tickets away in Puerto Rico now and have people show up. It just the TV got hot. And I took the same thing I had learned under <clears throat> Working in the working in the states, working under, you know, Jerry Jarrett, learning booking from those guys, and I took it down there, took my time with it, and got it up. And I took the same talent that they were kind of dying with, and I didn't bring anybody in, and I didn't send anybody out because nobody wanted to come in one thing and i guess everybody really wanted to go out but there was no place for them to go so they stayed but i took the same talent that they were dying with before after about three months and and started putting up numbers i mean when i took it over the rating was a 2.6 for iwa puerto rico i took my time with it and i shot a lot of videos out of the studio and it was just you know they have they have three sports in Puerto Rico: baseball, cockfighting, and pro wrestling. Those are the sports in Puerto Rico. So, because it was always a hot territory, I went down there about I don't know twenty years before I took over the book for this for IWA. It was hot, hot, double hot. I mean, those stadiums were full, but but I took my time with it, got it up. And they actually rivaled the old Memphis ratings. They were doing primetime numbers on Saturday morning. I'm sorry, Saturday afternoon at one o'clock. Now you have to be in Puerto Rico to know that Saturday afternoon in Puerto Rico is the shopping time. 
Because if you're going to get anything, the store's closed on Sunday. All the liquor stores sold on Sunday blue loss. So if you're going to get anything done, you have to get it get it done Saturday. So it, with the show being on at 1 o'clock and it doing such a great number, they were watching the show. And everybody knew us. And uh, But when he started, Victor Quinone is back to him, when he started uh, losing money, he, he was a kind of an emotional guy anyway. And I got up one morning, somebody called me, and he said, Victor Quinone's killed himself last night. I don't know if he shot himself. I don't know what happened to him, but he died. Did um, Victor try and keep you in the IWA after TNA gave you a, a better offer? Uh, did you consider staying, or were you sort of burnt out with Puerto Rico this Well, time? I, I went in there and told him. I said, listen, Jeff has offered me a better offer to go with this new group. And I explained it to him. And they sat there, and they were like three partners. It was Savio, Miguel, and Quinones, Victor. And they had known each other for years and years and years. And Victor used to get them booked in Japan. And and they sit there and looked at me. And I said, now, if you want to make me a better offer, I'll be open to that. You know what they did? Well, but it wasn't up to, it, it wasn't up to Victor and Savio. It was Victor's money. He just looked at me and I said, okay. And I got up and I left. So, but then about, I don't know, three months later, four months later, now he was regretting his decision. He should have kept me, but then it's too, well, it's not too late, but he never tried to rectify it. I don't, who, who knew what Victor Quinone was, was thinking because he was, he was a little bit off at times. Uh, I've, I've got to mention this as well. Um, <clears throat> what the heck do I have to mention? I've just forgotten about it. Uh <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, uh, cons- consultant. Were you a consultant for the IWA after you left? Because uh, I've got the, this down here. Well, I was, but I wasn't. They wanted me to consult on a part-time basis. But then again, you know, I'd made the guy a couple million dollars, and he was, he was all of a sudden, he tightened up his belt. And instead of asking for ideas of what I could help them with, he just kind of stopped talking to me. I said, okay. And I went on. Well, I, and I was happy with going on anyway because I'd been down there for about three years. And after a while in Puerto Rico, you develop what they call island fever. Hmm. And you just want to you just want to get back to the States. And so I come back and and I I love Puerto Rico, love the people, love the food. And I liked it when they weren't trying to kill me because, <laughs> because when I'd actually wrestled down there before, there was, there were a lot of wrestler fan, you know, interchanges be- between me and them. So I've got to ask you this as well it, on his Wikipedia. And I believe this is not true. Quinones was the son of professional wrestler, Robert's gorilla monsoon Morella. I always thought that was a myth. He is the son. Wikipedia is claiming that, and you know our Wikipedia is never wrong. But I mean, what did you hear at the time? No, well, that, I, I, I heard the same thing. None of my business. I don't care. But his mother, I, I've, I've seen pictures of his mother. Beautiful woman. Beautiful. But that does explain why Gorilla Monsoon and Victor were close. That does explain that how he could, that's how he started working in the old WWWF years ago. That does explain that. So, I, and I was wondering what was his end with these people? Because he was just a Puerto Rican kid off the street and Gorilla was Italian. So, what is the connection there? And I'd always heard that. It was never verified, or but you say it's, it's verified now on Wikipedia. No, it's on Wikipedia. That means nothing. So, <laughs> well, but but the the fact that they put that up probably means there's a little bit of truth to that fact. 